We got a duplex that's been sitting on the MLS for over 120 days, but it looks like it should have sold a long time ago. What is the deal? John from California, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. Gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. All right, John from California, my man, doing the due diligence again. I love it. Uh, John, I think this is your third uh, video analysis that you've gotten from me, so thank you for your continued patronage, my man. And uh, this is just the right move for your investment career. Uh, you're doing your due diligence. You are from California. This is your first foray into investing in Cleveland. You had just recently closed on another deal with us here in Cleveland, so congratulations on that. And you're looking into another property. Uh, for everyone else who's watching this video, a couple things. Number one, you're watching this a couple months after I sent this to John. I send these out as private links first while the deal is either active or pending. I do not release them until the deal actually closes, at which point I do release all of the video analysis products, though, because I want everyone to learn. And, uh, you know, the, the point I want to make to everyone here who's watching John's analysis is, you know, you have to spend a little money. Uh, to ensure you don't lose money, right? Whenever you buy a property, most people, not all, but most people know you need to get a third-party inspection. If you did not already know that, that is key. Do not purchase a property, especially an out-of-state rental property, without getting a third-party inspection. Just looking at the photos are not enough. You need to get a third-party person who is not getting paid based on whether or not the property closes to inspect the inside. But what you want to do if you're trying to invest in real estate, specifically real estate that's out of the state you live in, you need to get a desktop analysis to make sure it's going to work as a rental investment. Those third-party inspections from the inspectors, those are great, but those are great for inside the property. They don't tell you about the risks uh, that you're going to face and how the asset's going to perform as a business because that's what this is right this is a house yes but it's really a small business for john just like it is for you none of you guys are going to fly in from california or portland or texas or new york uh, you're not going to fly into cleveland and move into these properties right these are just investment vehicles much like purchasing a stock or a small business uh, so what you want to do is you want to get this analysis product from me where i explain to you I break it all down for you how this is going to work as a financial vehicle for you. And that's what I'm doing today for John. John's already had me do two of these for him. Because, see, I see a lot of investors out of state. You see low prices. You see prices from wholesalers or Zillow. And they're like, oh, this is like 0.2 miles away from this nice school or this or that. But, uh, you know, people are, are shooting you the, the best case scenarios. They're trying to sell you the property, right? They're trying to make it look really good. Um, so what I do with these analysis products, I break it down. Uh, in the most unbiased way possible. And, uh, you know, I honestly, I prefer that you guys, when you're doing these, prefer you get the analysis from me, and then I prefer you just go ahead and write the offers through the listing agents. Uh, you know, I, I like to be able to give you, like, the most unbiased opinion possible. Like, I'm going to analyze this property for you right now, John, and, you know, in my mind, I'm just giving you all the analysis. It's, it's not going to matter to me if you buy it or don't buy it. So putting myself in that frame of mind, I can shoot you the most straight way anybody possibly could shoot you. And that's what I want to do. That's why I like this product. That's why I think this product is very smart for investors. And, you know, you spend a few hundred bucks up front uh, to potentially save you thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars down the line. So, John, you got that. And that's why I think you are always going to have a very solid and stable investment uh, career and portfolio. Some of you other guys out there, I, I see a lot of folks out there. I hear horror stories. Uh, folks are out there just, just doing extremely risky behavior. People are like, oh, you got you got to pay cash. You got to move on the deal. You got to do it right now, right now, right now. Guys, look, yeah, sometimes there's good deals, and sometimes you'll have to pay cash, and you'll have to do as-is offers. Um, but missing out on those deals uh, in favor of being uh, – 
you know, more safe. Uh, you know, wh what's the word I want to use? Not safe. Uh, more uh, uh, conservative, right? Being a more conservative investor. Uh, like the best deal sometimes is the one you don't do, guys. So like, yeah, you may or may not miss out on a couple opportunities, but missing out on a couple opportunities isn't going to derail your career. What could derail your career, though, is making a catastrophic mistake, buying a property and losing 50, 60, 70, 80, 100,000 dollars on it. So that's my spiel. That's why these are important. Now, John, let me get into this for you, brother. Uh, your email to me. Uh, very cool, right? 12511 Plover Street, Lakewood. This is a duplex. It's listed by, who was it? Uh, a company out here called Key Realty. It's listed for 112000 Now, uh, this is in Lakewood. Lakewood's a great area, specifically the Birdtown neighborhood of Lakewood. Uh, Lakewood. You like the price, 112 seems like a very good price for the area. I agree. Uh, you think something is off because it's not selling. It's already been on the market for 120 days. Uh, so why is it not selling? What is uh, the catch here? What's the issue, right? Because you're absolutely right. This is a very uh, high demand rental neighborhood, right? You really cannot go wrong with Lakewood. Admittedly, Birdtown is the cheapest uh, in most low quality little micro neighborhood in Lakewood, okay? With Lakewood, the further west you go, the more expensive properties are going to be, the higher the rents, the higher the tenant quality. So this is on the eastern side of Lakewood. However, it doesn't mean it's like bad or anything. It is just, you just got to know in the, in the grand scheme of things with Lakewood, this is going to be the lowest quality. But I still feel the quality is very nice. It's still a B neighborhood. So I don't think you can go wrong there. And you're absolutely right. Uh, the price, the price is good, 112000 I pulled up comps for you, and I did not do the, the, the full Lakewood comps. I wanted to give you just quarter-mile comps over the last six months. Because remember, Lakewood prices or Birdtown prices in Lakewood are going to be a lot cheaper than like all the way west on the Rocky River Lakewood border, right? You're looking at properties, you know, above 300000 over there. So these are just east end stuff. Okay, let's see here. So four multi-families. We got a duplex, uh, a, th a third unit, a th you know, a duplex with th a triplex rather. That's what I'm trying to say. Duplex, triplex, duplex, quad prices: 100k, 111,375, 129,000, 142,500. Our property is being listed at 112,000. Now, all three of these. Very similar, right? These, these are all pretty old. Like this one, 1915, 1913. This one, 1909. This, this one right here, the one that sold for 129000 is a bit of an outlier. It is a little newer. It was built in 1956. But if we look at the other three, we have one built in 1915, one built in 1913, one built in 1909. All of those are over 100 years old. So it's very, you know, it's a great comp for what we have because we have a duplex here that was built in 1903. So our duplex is 116 years old. Um, so it's six years older than our other oldest one. Uh, what is that? 10 years older than this bad boy and 12 years older. So more or less very similar. As far as price points, you know, we're right in the middle there. This one a lot more expensive, but that is of course a quad. So looking at these two, 100,000, 111, 375. So we're going to be kind of right you know, right in there. Now, as far as what we have going on, the price again, 112. The rents are pretty darn high. Our upstairs unit, that is a 4-1. It's being rented at 800. The downstairs unit is a 3-1. It's being rented at 700. That is huge, man. Now, if we go back to our comps here, let's see here. Let me go into this one. The one that sold for a Oh, no, my URL is old. Let me refresh this. All right, sorry, a little technical difficulty there with my browser, but I got a more detailed view, right? <clears throat> so the one that sold for 100000 it doesn't specifically say in here how many bedrooms there are. The listing agent didn't put that or whatever, but we could reverse engineer it. So total rooms, eight, eight total rooms, right? So <clears throat> divide your units in half, right? So you have... Two units, four rooms apiece. So you got your four rooms. So we have a kitchen, then we have a bathroom, then we have a living room. So we probably have two one bedroom units in this. So this one, 100,000, one bed, one bath in each unit. The other one that was very close to our price point, 111,375, 
three units, all three of them had two beds, right? So two bed, two bed, two bed. And then the other one, each unit, two bed, one bath, that one sold for 129. And then the big old expensive one, which was a quad, that was four one bedroom units. So <clears throat> what we have, we have much larger, nothing else in our comp list over here has anywhere near the amount of bedrooms. We have one bedroom units, two bedroom units. We have a three bedroom unit and a four bedroom unit. So price point, absolutely. On the surface, there's nothing wrong with paying 112,000. That should be no issue. It should be a no brainer, which you've kind of surmised yourself. So the question is, why? Why is it not selling? Let's see, let's see what it looks like, right? Here's the outside. Admittedly, it's kind of ugly. This looks like it was probably at one time, like a, I would assume this was probably a store with two apartments above it, and they probably converted it. That's why they're so large. Uh, but that's what this looks like to me. This was probably a commercial unit a long, long time ago, and then we had two residential units up here. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's not on a main road, so it wouldn't really, you know, economically make sense. So eventually, you know, throughout the last 100 years or so, somebody converted it, and that's why we have such large units. Here's uh, one of the tenant stuff. You know, everything is dated in here. Per the listing agent notes, both of these tenants are long-term tenants. Uh, so like, you know, dated, dated, ugly. Nothing's looking great here. Uh, you know, all pretty dated. Okay, dated, dated, dated floor, dated, dated countertops. Um, you know, nothing, nothing looks spectacular. Here's, here's the yard, you know, decent little yard, no issues there. Uh, here's the basement. Look at this wall. This is what you're going to get with a property that's over 100 year, years old. This don't look like today's construction, right? Uh, this one does, but the other one definitely doesn't. Um, washer dryer for both tenants. Okay. Two hot water tanks. These are probably around 10 years old, if I had to guess. Uh, this, just so everyone's aware, this is a boiler, okay? Most heat around here is forced air with a furnace. Uh, this is a boiler, so a little bit different. These, uh, this one doesn't look new, right? You got like rusting all over the place. When you replace these, they're a little bit more expensive. We don't see too, too many of them. They are pretty rare. When we do furnace replacements, usually around like three grand. I want to say a boiler replacement's probably about four to five, maybe even four to six. Uh, don't 100% quote me on that. Like in the last like two or three years, I think we've only replaced like two or three uh, residential boilers. It's, it's not like a huge red flag. Like, don't think, oh shit, I can't buy a house because it's got a boiler. Um, no, it's, it's okay. Uh, just know that when you do replace it, it is a little bit more expensive. I believe it's somewhere around four to six. Uh, it, I'll try to look that up, see what we've spent on a few of them, and I'll try to put that in the show notes for you below uh, once I figure that out. Because um, again, something we don't do all the time. And then if you squeeze up here, guys, Right there, cool thing here, these are two nice updated electric panels. You know, if you weren't paying attention or knew what to look for, you may have missed that. So that's nice, we got two panels. So what do we have here, right? We have a property that appears to be priced right, okay? As far as like the mechanicals, everything seems to be okay. One little downside is we got a boiler. So why that, you know, everything else is okay though, right? Those like units, that's what it's gonna look like when you have tenants there long term. Uh, like why, why the issues? Why isn't the property selling? Well, something that I have access to that uh, the general public doesn't is uh, when, when agents list properties on the MLS, like this is the, what the buyers see. This is all the public data. This is what you guys get to see. You get to see their remarks. Great investment duplex, perfect for the owner occupant, fully rented. Second floor also has large third floor as part of the unit. Newer roof, two sets of appliances stay. Tenants pay utilities per the leases. Side lot is included, so that's why the yard was so big. Huge value, income property, $1,500 a month. So that's what you guys see. Uh, there's special notes uh, that only brokers can see. And more or less, <clears throat> what the listing agent said is the seller is only willing to accept cash offers. The seller's not willing to accept any financed offers. The property, it's over 100 years old. It's 116 years old. I didn't necessarily see anything that would prevent us from getting a loan on this property. So I think eventually you could get a loan. 
I'm assuming perhaps this realtor is not uh, super familiar with this type of a property. Um, you know, there's a few red flags going off to me uh, that says that, right? Like, it's a fully occupied duplex and this person, they're, they're marketing it to the owner occupant. Well, no, this would not be perfect for an owner occupant at all. This is fucking horrible for an owner occupant. There's two people already living in it. Uh, so that right there, the owner occupant is not the target buyer. The target buyer is you, John, uh, or anyone else watching this, investors who just want the income. Um, so I would assume we have a realtor here who's probably more familiar with the residential space. And that's what you get, guys. You get a lot of realtors that that's what they're used to because that's like 99% of the real estate that's sold out here, guys. 99% of the houses that are bought, uh, you know, they're bought by people who want to live there, right? That's what houses are for. It's it's what we do here at Holton Wise, you know, with this video and all the shows, the investment property for sale show, the MLS search and analysis show. This is a very unique product. We're the only people out here in the Cleveland market doing this. That's why we dominate this space so much. Um, so there's nothing against this real estate agent. I'm sure she's a great real estate agent, but uh, that's why you're reaching out to me, John. She is uh, not familiar with selling, she views this as a home. I don't view this as a home. I view this as an investment vehicle. I view this more closely to a stock than I view this as a home. So I believe <clears throat> that uh, perhaps sometime during uh, the listing, because this was actually listed one other time. It's been on the market 120 days right now, but prior to that, it was listed for like 90, 98 days, something like that, 92, 98 days, and then uh, it went back off the market. Uh, and then it came back again as a, a brand new listing. So we're, we're closer to 200 days than 120 days, actually. Uh, but you, it doesn't reflect that in the days on market because there were two separate listings. So I assume maybe at one point the seller had somebody, a buyer whose financing fell apart, and now they're gun shy. And then he's, you couple that with a real estate agent who has never really worked with a property that's this old or this type of property. And they're a little nervous. So they are refusing to accept any offers that are not cash. So that right there, coupled with the fact that when they originally listed this, they listed it a lot higher. They listed it at 159000 So it's taken them a while to chop their price all the way down to where we're at today. So it's not like it's been on the market for close to that 200 days at this great price of 112000 So that, to me, is going to be why. That's going to explain you know, your pricing here. Or rather, that's going to explain why the price seems so right, everything seems so right, but the property has not sold. It used to be priced too high. We probably have a gun-shy gun shy seller who wants to go only cash, and we have a real estate agent who, in my opinion, is more focused on the residential space. We seem to have a marketing angle that is more focused on the residential space. So, in my opinion, based on everything, I could 100% uh, James Wise approve this deal for you. I do not think it has anything specifically to do with that property, why it's still on the market. So I don't see any red flags there. Now, all that said, just so you know, you have to pay cash, right? They're not going to take, they've, they've clearly stated they're not going to take a loan. So you could buy it cash and then you could refi later. I do not believe you're going to have an issue. I think you're going to be fine. Um, what's important is you get a uh, third-party inspection, and if that inspector says anything about foundation issues, uh, structural issues at that point, then I would say, whoa, pump the brakes, man. That might be something we want to either get you a huge discount uh, so we could fix it, or you might want to back out of the deal because structural issues and foundation issues will very much freak out your lender, and you may be stuck not being able to do a refi. Uh, but, you know, we got to cross that bridge when we get to it. Remember, due diligence inside the four walls and outside the four walls. Just like I want you guys to, after you get your inspection, get an analysis from me so I can talk about the money. I don't want you to just buy an analysis from me and think you don't need to do an inspection. You don't. I'm, you, you can't do that. You have to do them both, guys. I am. First of all, I've never been inside the property. It's just a desktop analysis, number one. Number two, I'm not a certified home inspector, so I'm not crawling around basements scoping out the foundations. You need a guy in there for, you know, they'll spend four or five hours in there with a fine-tooth comb, so you got to do both of those things. Um, but if everything checks out with that foundation, I don't think we'll have a major issue, and you could do, uh, you buy it cash, and you could refi later. So 
As far as the numbers are concerned, I ran the numbers for you as I always do on these analysis. $1,500 a month in rent, $18,000 a year in scheduled income. Of course, that's not going to be all the money you make though, John. There's costs to operating these properties. The first three costs I have on the chart here, these are variable costs, okay? Repairs, vacancy and non-pay, capital expenditures. Now, these are estimates. I cannot tell you exactly how much it's going to be. It's going to be different every month. You know, things are going to break. Tenants don't always pay rent. You might have to evict people. And then CapEx, well, CapEx really isn't all that variable, to be honest with you. Of the, I guess I should have said repairs and vacancy are pretty variable. CapEx is, you know, that's, that's I kind of know what it's going to be, right? Because you got a roof. A roof's going to last you 30 years. We said we got a newer roof. A roof like this, probably going to cost maybe about six grand. So you have roughly 30 years of life, and then you're spending six grand every 30 years. Furnaces, uh, normally they're three grand for furnaces, but we said here we got a boiler, so it's going to be between four and six. And those last, the boiler should probably last you about the same time. Um, and hot water tanks, those are going to last you about 15 years. Those are going to cost about a grand. So, you know, those capital expenditures, you know, going into this, you have to save up for those. So that's not that variable. So I have you penciling in 75 for that and then 75 for the vacancy and the repairs. So that's 900 bucks a year for all three of those things I want you to put in your pocket. You might not be spending it all right away, but I want you to save that because eventually those costs are going to come up, right? The taxes. Lakewood is one of the higher taxed uh, suburbs in the Cleveland market, just so you know. Lakewood's pretty high. Cleveland Heights is pretty high. Shaker Heights is high. Uh, just be cognizant of that. 3602 a year. Averages out, you know, 300 bucks a month and some change. So just 300 bucks. Insurance, um, just like, you know, with realtors, most, uh, you know, realtors do residential stuff. A lot of insurance agents do residential stuff. They're used to insuring people's personal homes, their cars, life insurance, all that jazz. We have our own insurance brokerage, the Hogue Insurance Agency. Uh, contact info for that is in the show notes below. So just like we focus solely on investor needs with the sales, um, we also focus solely on investor needs with the insurance. So we'll be able to insure that probably about 80 bucks a month or 960 a year. Um, so definitely check out our insurance agency, the Hogue Insurance Agency, in those show notes. Um, note to other viewers out there besides John, we are doing more than Ohio. So the entire turnkey area, we are currently working on getting our licenses in almost every single turnkey state. So check, uh, reach out to Kevin Hogue and check exactly where we're at with the licensing in the states in which you own rental properties. Um, by the end of 2019, we should be licensed in all 50 states. So we could take care of investors nationwide in regards to the insurance. Water, you gotta pay water sewer, right? You gotta pay water sewer. You know, you're a landlord here in the Cleveland market, you gotta pay water sewer. Uh, if you'd like to know why, go to the Holton Wise FAC. Matter of fact, let me pop it up on the screen right here. You go to holtonwise.com, click on the FAC, right? I got three FACs, one's for investors like you, and one, got one for the tenants, and we got one for the traditional buyers and sellers around here in Cleveland that want to sell their homes. You click here on this FAC, you go all the way down here, you know, you scroll through the FAC, and uh, we're going to have a big old summary of information on exactly why you have to pay water sewer. Sometimes people are like, oh, could we get rubs? Could we sub meter? Could we do this? Could we do that? No, there's no way around it. If you want to invest in the Cleveland market, you're paying the tenants water and sewer bill. I explain why on the facts. So you're going to have to check that out for why. Um, but because of that, I factored in an estimate of water sewer. I think that should be 150 a month. Now, remember, that's super variable, man. Uh, that could go up, it could go down. It's really going to be based on how much people are using. Um, I just kind of estimated it out. Um, it's possible, it's very possible that the water sewer at these units could go higher um, over the course of ownership because remember, we were comparing it to like two bedroom and one bedroom units before. These are four, a four bedroom and a three bedroom unit. So you do have a good chance of getting more people in your unit, right? You could have, you know, more adults, uh, could be a family with children, you know, more people equal more showers, more baths, more dishes. So that's going to equal higher water bills. So be cognizant of that, but I think 150 a month's a good ballpark. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches 
FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Make sure you're subscribed to our investor mailing list. We are going to send you an email with the latest investment properties for sale every single day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can expect a full video offering, just like what you've seen today, in every one of these emails. Uh, as far as lawn care, we cut about 16 times a year here at Holton Wise. So we don't cut all year, but I did average it out over you know, every single month. So the total cost is going to be about 528 bucks. It's roughly $33 a cut. If you break that out over 12 months, it's average of 44 a month, but we're not going to be cutting grass or charging you lawn uh, landscaping fees in January, February, uh, maybe at the very end of March. Uh, but keep that in mind. And then of course, my favorite, you got to pay the man. That's right. 150 a month in PM fees. So you're scheduled to bring in 1500 a month, but we know you're not gonna put all that in your pocket. You're gonna be spending on average 949 every month to operate this property. So that's gonna bring you a net return, your cash flow. At the end of the day, even factoring in things like your repairs, your vacancy, and your capital expenditures. Remember, you're putting that in your pocket. So it's gonna be in your pocket right now, but you're anticipating larger one-time bills, right? Like something big's gonna break or you're gonna replace a hot water tank. So you're just, you're budgeting yourself for that. So even including that money, you know, maybe you put that money aside in like a separate bank account. Don't let yourself think that that's your cash. That's your rainy day fund. Even with filling up your rainy day fund with the appropriate estimates, you're going to be bringing in five fifty one a month out of this property, which should average six thousand six hundred twelve dollars a year. That with a purchase price, if you bought it right at list, hundred twelve thousand, which is a pretty good price for this. That's going to put you at a cap rate of 5.9. Now, I think the most important thing when you're investing in real estate is financing. I think it's very important to finance. We've already established that this has been on the market uh, for so long, mainly because of how they're marketing it and the fact that they're only accepting cash offers. So, you know, more or less for you to actually purchase it, that's it. That's as far as the number analytics are going to go right now. You have to pay cash. You got to be willing to, you know, Bring in 112000 or close to it, and you're going to get a 5.9 cap. You can't buy this with a mortgage. That does not mean you can't refi later. Remember, you're going to get that third-party inspection. And if there is structural issues, that could be a huge uh, hurdle to getting you the ability to refi later. So barring no structural issues, you should have no problem refining this. And let's break this down. Let's see what the numbers are if you refi it. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it yet or don't know, if you go to the Tools and Resources tab, you can go to a mortgage calculator, and we sh have a calculator for you. It's free to use. You could actually see exactly what your mortgage payments are going to be, and that's going to help when you calculate this stuff that I'm about to calculate right now. You have to put down 25%. So if you bought it at 112, you're putting down 28,000, which is going to leave you with a total mortgage 84,000. Okay. So if you punch that into the calculator, it's going to give you your amortization schedule, your monthly mortgage payment, which is going to be four twenty-five sixty-two a month. So every single year, if you do do a refi to pay back the money you're getting, right, to pay it all back, you're looking at spending, or I mean, yeah, you're looking at a mortgage cost of five thousand one hundred seven dollars and forty-four cents. So essentially, you pay this thing cash, right? You do your refi if there's no structural issues. The bank's going to give you back eighty-four thousand of the hundred twelve thousand you spent. So you still have twenty-eight thousand of your own money in the deal if it appraises at the price you paid, which I think is a fair estimate because that appraiser, you know, the biggest 
like the easiest way to help an appraiser determine the value is what someone purchased the asset for in an arm's length transaction. So if you do a refi very quickly, the biggest thing that's going to weigh heavily on that appraiser is going to be that purchase price. So if you bought it at 112, it's probably going to appraise at 112. But they'll give you 84, 84,000 of your money back. So you're going to stay with your 28,000 in the deal. Every year you're going to pay back 5,107.44 on that loan. So every month after you're paying down your loan of your $84,000, after you're putting money into your rainy day fund, you should still cash flow $125.38 per month or $1,504.56 a year. That is a cash on cash return of 5.4%. That doesn't sound super, super sexy, uh, but there's, there's more upside. There's more meat on the bone to this deal. Again, I, I still think this deal should be 100% James Wise approved. The only thing that I think would make me want to deny this deal for you at this price uh, is if there's structural issues brought up at the home inspection. But as of right now, I like everything. Um, 125.38 in cash flow every month, that's not bad. There's nothing wrong with that. You're in Lakewood, highly desirable area. If we're going to see some appreciation in Cleveland, you bet your ass you're going to see it in Lakewood, man. That's where people want to live. That's one thing that's good. Number two, the tenant base. They're not going to be that rough. They're not going to be that bad. Yes, it's the lowest quality neighborhood in Lakewood at the moment, but Lakewood's really nice, man. Lakewood is a big step up from Cleveland. So I don't think you're going to run into too many issues with your tenants. That's another thing. And three, I ran the numbers and I off of the current rents, 800 and 700. And I think that this is acceptable. This is not a bad deal. If you just did this forever, you're going to make money. This is a good, safe investment. But we have some room. You asked me what the market rents were going to be, and then you asked me how much it was going to cost to get each unit ready uh, to hit that market rent. Obviously, you've been watching my content, John. Thank you for that, because you guessed about 15000 a unit. And that's pretty much right on the money, bro. What we want to do to those units, if we're going to get those units to the max rent, which that four-bedroom unit, I think we could probably rent that if i had to guess probably 950 maybe maybe a thousand now uh <clears throat> you know give or take the rents in the bird town area are not as high as they're going to be on the west end of lakewood but a lot of the properties in the bird town area are like these these are just like super super old properties and a lot of them are just going to look how yours this one currently looks right just kind of like old dated and beat down so if we bring a beautiful fresh very nice spacious unit to the Birdtown area 950 to a thousand i do not think we're going to have any issues hitting that you know four bed one bath should be no problem as far as the other one that's a three bed one bath currently being rented at 700 i think we should more or less get that one up to probably 850 maybe maybe 950 at the at the top end just so you guys know when you're buying duplexes the down unit always rents faster than the upstairs unit so that's why we're going to go from 850 to 950 and even though we have another bedroom upstairs you know our baseline is 950 to a thousand because the downstairs ones people usually like those a little bit more so with the, all the money you're bringing in right now, you know, 125 bucks a month, that's fine for you. But, you know, best case scenario, you're bringing in another 250 out of the down and another 250 out of the up. You could be bringing in another 450 a month times that by 12. You could, you know, feasibly add on another $5,400 a year. And just so you know, those rents are going to vary a little bit, right? Like if we go to rent it in April, right? It's going to have a lot more demand than if we tried to run it in December. That's why I gave you a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a window. I know uh, very close to this property, one property in particular. It's a brick duplex that I'm thinking about. It's a up down. Uh, it's probably like two or three streets away from this, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're renting each of those units for like eight seventy five, and they're two bed one bath. Uh, so nine fifty a thousand. Very very doable here. Uh, so huge opportunity to increase rents but you ain't going to get it uh out of what it's looking like right now i do not think it's a good idea to increase those tenants rents um, i would leave those tenants in there at this time 
let them start paying it down, make a little bit of money, and wait for a natural turnover, because you gotta put about 15K into each one of those units, because those are ugly, right? We gotta paint everything gray, white trim, redo the flooring, like the flooring in those kitchens were ugly. We gotta pull those counters and cabinets and stuff, those look like shit. We gotta pull them all out, put some, you know, we'll put some like Home Depot or Lowe's quality stuff in there. Nice countertop, probably wanna go with a quartz, with an undermount sink, spend a little bit more money just to get something really, really nice. Cause you are in Lakewood and uh, you know, to get a lot of the uh, super trendy, high quality tenants that maybe are gonna be a little bit more west of this property to get them to come a little bit more east than they're, they're used to and still spend that high amount of rent, we're gonna wanna give them a really, really nice modern product. But I wouldn't recommend doing that right now. I would just ride these two existing tenants out. Just put the cash in your pocket. No reason for you to buy the property and immediately try to spend another 30K. So once those tenants naturally turn, I would do it one unit at a time. You're gonna spend roughly $15,000. We'll put some premium upgrade options in there. You wanna go for the premium upgrade options. Uh, so, you know, 15, 20K max with everything like totally 100% decked out, looking amazing. I'm talking quartz, undermount sink, like super high quality stuff, and a nice little backsplash, get it looking really good. Uh, but then at that point, man, that's an extra $5,400 a year in your pocket and you don't really need to redo any of your numbers like a lot of your expenses they're going to remain the same if not go down because if you have really really nice units you're getting higher quality tenants and less turnovers less turnovers is going to equal less vacancy less uh, repairs right because a lot of your repairs are happening at turnover so by putting in that extra you know 30 possibly 40k to get these things totally decked out making more income on the top line and reducing expenses on the bottom line. So that would be a great long-term play for you. John, thank you again for getting another analysis from me. Everyone else, if this is your first video of mine you've ever seen, or if you're a longtime viewer who just loves watching me do these analysis products, do yourself and myself a favor and smash the subscribe like or share button let's get the word out i don't want to see investors flying by to the sea flying by the seat of their pants purchasing properties in cleveland just because they seem so much cheaper than what they are where you live thinking oh it's only a seventy thousand dollar deal what does it matter i can't get a parking lot for that i can't get a parking space for that in la guys you can lose money out here and people do it every day so do the smart thing get the due diligence done be like my guy john from california who before he purchases anything he gets me to look at it totally unbiased so he knows he's not getting himself into any risks he's not prepared to take on just so everyone is aware you just go property search definitely click the start here tab because i sell investment properties i am actually the number one seller of rentals in cleveland so if you don't want to pay for an analysis every day at one o'clock, I will send an analysis of properties I'm selling to you guys right to your inbox. Check your spam or your promotions. If after you sign up, you don't see those every day. I assure you they come out every day. Every once in a while, they go to your spam or your promotions until you mark us as a safe sender. But if the properties are going too quick, because I sell these quick, man, I put a video out, I email it out. I got 10, 20 offers every single day. These things fly. Uh, so if those are going too quick or maybe you don't, that's not the specific type of asset you want to buy. The market's huge. There's 5,000 other realtors. There's wholesalers uh, for sale by owner. You could do your own marketing, your own direct mail. You could be trying to talk to little old ladies. You just want to make sure you get, you know, some boots on the ground looking at your deal. And that's what this product is. So if you scroll on down here, you could purchase the products. This is the entry level product, the desktop analysis. I look at everything from my office here. I take all the publicly available data and I analyze it for you. We also have a few upgrades. Uh, if you wanna just send me your criteria, I will take your criteria and I will find you properties that come closest to meeting it. If you wanna see more of the inside of the property, I can have my film team go out and actually film an interior tour of that property for you as well. More or less, I have a product or a solution for every investor out there. So definitely check that stuff out. 
As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holton Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video, just like this one, to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from health. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.